I'll post them up. Hi guys, we're, we're uh, happy to be here tonight. I uh, was just discussing with Judy here where we met and we don't even know. So we met somewhere through the virtual world, I think even like a few years ago and we became Facebook friends. And so I'm just really blessed and honored to have her here tonight. I just wanted to share about Judy. She's a business growth coach and success strategist and serial entrepreneur. Judy Weber believes nothing is impossible. As a little girl from a small town with humble means, she let nothing stop her from pursuing her big dreams to make an impact on the world. Her life's work is to empower ambitious women of faith to recognize their awesomeness and their unique genius Woo! and take strategic action to turn their passion into a profitable and scalable business quicker and easier than they've ever thought possible. In her most recent venture, Judy launched and scaled to multi-six figures. Wow. Growing a combined social media following of over 40,000 and becoming nationally recognized as a top 100 industry influencer all in less than 12 months. Woo! Judy is a thought after, keynote speaker on entrepreneurship, women in business, confidence, and business leadership. She's also the creator and host of the She is Extraordinary podcast straight talk wrapped in love and grace about what it takes to make it in business. She's been featured in top 100 RIS media and home resource magazines, as well as Thrive, Global, Medium, Real Connections and Pulse. A former trial lawyer and a mother of six, almost grown boys. She feels beyond blessed to live her passion and do life with her husband in suburban Philadelphia. Welcome, Judy. Thank you, <laughs> Stacy. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. You know, Judy, I was reading your bio and I was like, whoa, how, how, how do I like, communicate with this woman? This <laughs> woman of accolades. I was like, I had to pray. Lord, help me to know. I did pray today. And actually, really? I, was, I was in a challenge and she's like, we're going to learn how to listen to God. And she goes, ask God a question. I'm thinking, I'm going to ask <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so what did he say? Talk to her like anybody else because she's Yes, exactly. <laughs> he did. He did. So I wanted to start back at the beginning. I do this um with all the guests because I think it's really cool to see where did you begin? You know, where did you come from? What are you about? So you mentioned you grew up in a small town with humble beginnings. Awesome. I would love to hear more about where you live your family and some memories. Did you live in the same place your whole life? Okay, wow, this is a great question. Okay, so I come from poor stock and I say that with pride. My daddy was a factory worker. He worked two and three jobs because I'm one of six and my wow. mom stayed home. Um, she could have worked, but she wanted to stay home. So that's how it was. And we stayed in one little, um, what is it called? A Cape Cod house with one bathroom until I was in almost sixth grade. Then we moved to a house that still had one bathroom and one less bedroom, but a couple of my brothers had already moved out. So anyway, um, ever since I can remember, Stacy, I wanted to be one of two things, a teacher or a lawyer. But I didn't think people like me could be lawyers, right? I mean, I was told, don't trust a man in a suit. And, um, you know, business people are greedy and, you know, it's just a whole different mentality that frankly, I have those limiting beliefs that I tackle every day. Um, yeah. but I'm a twin. I have a twin sister yeah. oh. and she is a business powerhouse. She is awesome. Um, memories. I mean, I just remember having fun as a kid. I remember, you know, I, I, I kid around like this. My days go like this right now. And so yeah. I kid around with my kids. I'm like, I remember when I was a little girl and I felt like I played and played and played and it was finally breakfast. Yeah. And we played and played and played and it was only lunch. You know, now <laughs> I feel like I turn around, it's dinner time. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. Yeah. Wow. So, so were you outgoing or shy as a little girl? That's a great question. Um. When I was with my twin sister, we were fearless. But when I was without her, I was like shy and quiet. And, you know, it's just so funny how different we were when we were together. 
And then in third, no, fourth grade, when the teacher, the principal said, these twins need to be separated. Mm. And we were so upset. Yeah. But it was the best thing. It was about time, right? Fourth grade. It was about time. <laughs> yeah. They forced you to have to stand on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so now I'm totally extroverted and I I love talking to strangers and it's fun. Yeah. Um, but I could never have done that. Even when I got out of school in the twenties and my twenties and I was going to networking events, I would be the one with the drink in hand with the back against the wall saying, is this over yet? <laughs> like, why would I even go? <laughs> wow. See, you have such a personality now. See how God can change our lives and bring our voice out. That's, that's such a inspiration. So what was unique about you? What, 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 was some, what was something unique about you when you were growing up? Unique about me. Um, gosh. I was always driven. Like, and you know, that got me in trouble as an entrepreneur. Because, <laughs> you know, my straight A mind and my perfectionism, if I didn't get that under control, would have killed me. Wow. Right? Because I just got to make sure everything's just right. Dot the I's, cross the T's. And um, so my mom, I mean, let's put, let's put it this way. I knew that I was going to college and I didn't even worry about the money. I knew my mom and dad didn't have money and I'm like, I'm going. And my big brothers and sisters who didn't get together, like, how do you think you're going? I said, I don't know. I'm, I just know I'm going. Wow. And I did. So, you know, Good I was always very motivated. Wow. And did you have to work hard to do that? Did you actually? Um, my grades helped. Yeah. You know, and, you. and I had loans when I came out. Mom and dad, you know, did what they could. And, you know, when I graduated from high school, some of my friends got some really big presents. One of them got like a car, even though I, wow. I went to a poorer type of school district, but some had money. And my present was the opportunity to go to college. I was great. Yeah. I didn't need any gift, you know. Wow. So. And you wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, what type of lawyer was it again? I'm a trial lawyer. I, yeah, I don't practice anymore. But. So what that was, was um, I graduated at the top of my class. And I don't say that to brag, but I was literally number three out of 400. Um, number one in music education. I wanted to be a music teacher. Remember I said music or teacher or yeah. love. So I yeah. went to college to be a teacher and I graduated in 87. There were no jobs, no jobs yeah. unless I wanted to go to California or Oregon or somewhere out West. And I didn't. I mean, I was raised here outside of Philly and I, here's where I wanted to stay. So guess where I worked? I worked at Macy's, <laughs> Macy's, and I was commissioned sales and did really well, got promoted to management. And then I went to outside sales and ultimately worked for Dictaphone. Does that name ring a bell? Do you know Dictaphone? No, I'm a candidate. They, so I don't know. So they might, you might not know, but they, um, it's equipment that lawyers use to talk oh, into, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And I remember one Friday afternoon, I was 25 years old. I came out of this lawyer's office. I was trying to sell him something. And this may sound rude and I'm sorry, but it's truth. I walked out that Friday afternoon, mumbling to myself, walk into the car and I go, if that guy can be a lawyer, I know I can do it. I'm going to law school. Wow. And I never looked back. Yeah. Wow. So then you transition to be entrepreneur which is interesting wow we'll talk about that in a minute but i want to ask you because when i was praying today one of the questions that came up was, was do you sing do i sing um i love to sing there my favorite time of the week is singing at church and i've been i've been hating this whole COVID thing because of that but i still sing here in front of the tv but but i don't sing well I mean, I just love to sing praise music. I mean, thank God for praise music. <laughs> well, that was the question you wanted me to ask you. And I was like, that's interesting. So well, maybe you are better than you think. Maybe you maybe, are. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm glad that because you never know, right? Sometimes yeah. we, just like we talk about identity, like sometimes we don't realize you know, what we sound like to other people. Today I was on a cliff and everybody, this, this guy couldn't hear us and he starts singing worship. And then everybody's worshiping, like, were delayed, but everyone could sing beautiful. I was like, never seen something like this. It was, wow. you don't know, right? 
You yeah. just don't know. Um, so now I want to ask, uh, where, where did you meet your husband? Tell a fun story about that. Did you have a new engagement story? Oh, wow. Oh, my husband, it was, we had a wonderful first date. Where we met was online. Oh. And it's August 1st of 20, I'm remarried. So August 1st of 2014. So we're coming up on six years since we met. And I remember it was a Friday night and I went to my computer and I logged on to something called Our Time. Listen, and my single girl friends are on here, so just make sure you say that properly. <laughs> yes, Our Time, O-U-R-T-I-M-E dot com. And um, so I do searches like Christian man within so many miles and he pops up and, you know, I clicked it. And within five, 10 minutes, he smiled back or whatever it is. And our first date was like, I don't know, 12 days later. And we I went to this restaurant and they took us up like where nobody else was. I don't know why they took us up to like this lonely spot, like alone, but it was so fun. We were laughing and um, it was just really fun. Oh, and I'm clumsy. That's a funny thing about me. I'm clumsy. So I'm going up the steps, following the waitress or hostess, whatever. And I trip up the steps. My daughter does that. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get to the table and I said, oh, okay, now, okay. Now, you know, I'm clumsy. <laughs> so, that's amazing. What's his name? Stu. S-T-U. Stuart. Stu. Oh, that's my brother's name too. Wow. So that is so funny. Like my daughter, she falls up the stairs. I, I've never met anyone. There, I, I'm going to tell her. I met another person who falls up the stairs. She's not alone. <laughs> I didn't even know what's possible, but it does happen. And it's so funny. It makes me laugh every time. <laughs> it was, I was embarrassed, but you know, I was like, okay, either he thinks that's funny or he thinks I'm whatever. I'd see what it is, what it is. But uh, I never did it after that. <laughs> That's amazing. And now you wrote here. I'm intrigued you're a mother of six boys. Yes. How let me, far are they? Let me, yeah, let me explain though. Three are mine and three are Stu's. Okay. So, so my boys are, and they're not boys, they're men, 23, 21, and my baby just turned 19. Wow. And his boys are... Let's see. His baby just turned 22, 25, and 31. So only Wonderful. only my two youngest are with us right now. Oh, okay. So it's, it's like a, a quieter house. Like my friend said she's done that many times. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see that. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Naomi. Are there any, like when, when you brought the boys together, did they become good friends or was there a journey in that? You know, I had this dream, the Brady Bunch dream, but it didn't quite work out like that. And I think um, they all get along. Yeah. Uh, Stu's oldest is just too old. Like he's, you know, yeah. he doesn't, he's not married, but he, he thinks he's, you know, I guess too old for babies. I don't know. He's a nice guy, but he's the one that's not closest. Um, and then Stu's middle son is just a doll. Um, but he works a lot, so he's not around much. And his baby just graduated from Penn State. Wow. Um, so he's just busy. So the boys get along, but they don't get together very much, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of guys. I have a 20-year-old daughter, but she's off to YWAM for nine months to study the Bible. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, that's a lot of guys, you know? That's a lot of yeah. A lot of options there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I have no pink and purple in my house. Let's just say that. There's no well, pink or purple. <laughs> Wow. So do you have to cook for like, you, they want you all the time? Well, that's a funny story. Okay. We're being real here tonight. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, okay. Have <laughs> okay. So here's the real thing. I don't cook. I mean, I know how to get by, but I don't that's enjoy nice. it. Yeah. I, I really, I, I don't enjoy it. And, um, I don't have time. And so when they were little, when my guys were little and I was a single mom, I cooked. But yeah. now I really don't. My husband is a very good cook. So he, yeah. So he does, he does stuff when he's home. When he's not there, we just spend for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's me too. Like I haven't really cooked. I cook randomly, but for since probably 10 years, it's been more, kids would never come home. Like I cook and then they would be 
as my friends. Or, you know, yeah. so it just started slowly. Mm -hmm. I never well, knew who was home. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have, I, a story. Like it. <laughs> I, I have a story as to why I don't cook, kind of story, okay. right? Um, my mother was the oldest of, I think, nine. I want to say nine. And um, so she cooked while her mom just sat around, I mean, as I understand it. So she kind of resented and she raised her, her younger siblings, she told me. And she said she always kind of resented that she never had a childhood. So I can remember when I was little, my twin sister and I would say, mommy, mommy, teach me how to cook. And she would say, go play, go play. Oh. So, wow. you know, she was, she was, you know, was thinking I didn't have a childhood, go play. Uh, yeah. So I just, I don't know, cooking's not my thing. So. We have that in common. I would rather be on the computer. I would rather yes. be accomplishing something else. But I don't I'd mind this be, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather be at the beach. That's where I'd rather be. That's something I got to work on because I don't leave the house very often. So have, have you always dreamed to make an impact on the world? What was it you felt? Was it a passion from a young age? Wow. Yes, I always have. I, uh, look, I, I mean, it's so weird. I, when I tell you I come from poor stock, it ain't kidding. I mean, so, but I didn't know I was poor. You know, when I realized I was poor, when I got to college yeah. and I saw girls and guys driving around in this ugly car, you know what it was? A Jaguar. I didn't know what it was. And we drove around old clunkers. So I didn't know. And, and they had fancy clothes and this one girl had a huge, you know, engagement ring. And I'm like, is that thing real? It looks like as big yeah. as the sun, you know? But um, so I just remember ever since I was little, I totally felt that God was with me. And I always had a soft heart for women and girls. Like I just always, well, my mom was kind of a feminist. So she raised a feminist in me, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. that has changed quite a bit in the way I think as far as feminism and how I look at it now as a Christian woman. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always did think that I was meant to do something important. And mm -hmm. I feel like all the ups and downs, all the ins and outs and all the things I've done in my career and entrepreneurship, I just feel like what I'm doing right now, Stacy, is exactly everything led to this. Like this is what I'm meant to do. Uh, that's beautiful. I love that. I love, it's so inspiring. Um, I feel like you're an artistic person. I can see it in you in your picture. I can see it behind you like, in that beautiful mirror. And the question that I have is how do you apply your artistry to business? I love that question. You know, I think that I am kind of unique in that I have right brain and left brain. Like um, as a lawyer, I was trained to be very logical, very um, practical, and I'm following, you know, a, a system or a process. But I've True. got the other side to my brain, right? I was a music person. I played piano. I love design mm -hmm. and decorating. So I, I think my creativity comes in with my marketing and the way I teach it and the branding, that whole piece that I teach with my clients and students and um, just the whole creative thing in that, look, fully embrace who you are in Christ, listen to what he tells you to do and go with it full throttle. Don't hold back. And that's easy to say and not very easy to do. But as I feel myself actually doing that, I, I just, I just feel different. Like I feel yeah. like I'm finally like where I need to be and it's going to be a ma an amazing future because God's in control, not me. And it yeah. has nothing to do with me. I'm just a vessel that he uses, you know? And that's fun while you're doing it. I was just hearing like, find your artistry in the strategy. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Well, I was just getting that for you. Cause I don't, I don't know how to try like, to use it. Um, I think that would be really, you have a lot of artists who don't know how to bring, they wouldn't it's, draw strategy. Well, you know what? I do have, I have a friend who's a beautiful artist. And then I have another client who is um, another talented artist who 
wants to bring her art to the world and monetize it. Yeah, so yeah. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I think you'll, and with the way you're made, you'll be building it all. I have to get a, I love, I love when God does that. Like, it's not my real house, you know? You yep. know? It's, it's not my, someone's saying, I love this interview. You're a lot of fun, dude. You're a great funny star for Christ. Uh, Write oh, your name in you. Facebook user. Yes, he is. So you have so many accolades and achievements. When I read your bio, I was like, wow. I thought, well, what will I ask for the thing? I honor you in all you've walked through. What an inspiration. We would love to hear more about your journey through this. How did it all begin? Okay. Wow. Um, well, you know, God, God shows up in my life like throughout it. Um, you know, I was blessed. The best thing mom gave me was an introduction to Jesus Christ. And I still remember learning about him. It was a Sunday night. I remember stuff like this. I was like four or five uh -huh. years old and mommy, mom always had this, my mom and dad have passed. Um, mom had uh -huh. this family Bible. It was a big black Bible. And I remember on the front, she always had people's names. I later found out that was the marriages of her children. Um, yeah. My biggest brother got married when I was like not even five um, and, and the deaths. And um, anyway, so this was always like a precious thing. And I knew that mommy read it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And she would tell me stories, you know, the story of Abraham and Noah and all this stuff. But on that Sunday night, she said, girls, I need to tell you something you have a brother, a big brother, and his name is Jesus. And now understand, I had three big brothers who I loved very much. So I remember looking around and saying, where is he? Where is he? Like, <laughs> I knew I didn't meet him. But anyway, so so I always, like, just loved him. And But I had, um, well, how do I say this? Okay, the, the first time God showed up in my life big time was when I was in college. When I went to be a freshman in college, um, I'm a small town girl, not on a farm, mind you, but you know, I, I'm a small town person. And so yeah. I never left home except for a sleepover one night, like literally down the street. So yeah. I was kind of, um, what do you call that? Uh, coddled, I guess maybe. Yeah. 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 So I went to college two and a half hours away, which is not a big deal, but I'm telling you, I, it was a mess. Um, uh, I was stressed out, an eating disorder mm -hmm. developed. And um, I remember this, the whole first semester was just pure hell, really. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember being in the bathroom and um, I remember crying out. I don't think it was audible, but in my mind, I'm screaming, Jesus, help me. I don't want to live like this. Help me, Lord, help me, please heal me. And um, there was a girl struggling with bulimia. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was in the stall next to me, I, I, I realized, and she was throwing up and it's really neat how God works because in that moment, yeah, I was feeling so bad for me, but as soon as I heard what she was doing and she was stick skinny and I was just so scared for her. And all of a sudden my mind went from praying for me to praying for her because wow. I'm just like, Lord, please help her, please help her. And you know, it's amazing because I felt like in the, in the weeks to come, I just knew that God met me in that bathroom in a very wow. special way. And I, I can't even describe it better than that, but I just know he was there. And that was him saying, you came to me and I listened, you know? Wow. And so fast forward to graduated college. Um, I was with my high school sweetheart for almost seven years. And I knew he, he lost a good friend in a, in a, in a crash um, when I was in college. Wow. So he, got in with the wrong crowd, got into drugs. And anyway, on my wedding night, um, he beat me up and it was, and I thought I'm a, you know, Hey, I'm a Christian. I had sex with the guy. I can't not, I can't leave him. So anyway, um, it was just a horrible, horrible five months, but you know how good God is. Yeah. I was starting to drink too much and blacking out. I mean, I'm telling you, I was going down a horrible road and then, you know, but God. So yeah. this is a really cool story. And I'm sorry, I feel like it's a monologue, but it's a really cool story. I know, I, if this is about you. <laughs> okay. So, so, um, so my, 
my husband, my newlywed husband, we were together for like five months and I worked at Macy's, I told you, but I had a day off. So um, this particular day, my mom came to the door and she said, Judy, do you want to go shopping today? Now to most people, that's like, what's the big deal? My mom never did that. Wow. My mom was a homebody. Wow. She never did that. So, wow. so she comes to the door and I go, okay, mom, that'd be fun. We'll go shopping and, and dig this. This is just so good. I'll try to make it concise. It's so freaking good though. So we get out to the parking lot of my apartment complex and she's like, I'm going to drive. I said, no, you're not. I'm driving. <laughs> and we had this back and forth. I don't even know why. Thank God I drove. I wow. wouldn't be here if I didn't drive Really, wow. because her car was a tin can anyway. So long story short, we go shopping, had a great time. We're leaving the store and don't, you know, it's the baby department. So even huh. though I had all this stuff going on in my mind as we're leaving and I'm like, Oh mom, wouldn't it be great if I had a baby one day? Can you tell me the story of when I was born? I love to hear the story. So she's telling me the story as we're walking out to the car. And even as we're driving, little did I know, I was about to meet a drunk driver head on. Whoa. It was one in the afternoon. Um, I had just passed a tractor trailer. We were on a one lane each way. I looking up the hill and this guy's like flailing. You know how it is like when it's snow and you're like, yeah. woo, having fun yeah. in a parking lot. Well, this guy was yeah. having fun out of control coming down the road. And I remember I said, oh my God, mom. And she goes, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And out of reflex, I said, shut up. And I just was like, like trying to, I don't know. I just was like, shut up, it's a reaction. She said, she turned away and said, Jesus help us. I remember seeing the car. I did not hear the crash. God takes you out. Yeah. Um, long story short, my mom broke all her ribs. We didn't have seat belts on. Incredible. And uh, anyway, so much happened at the at, at the ER. I was blind for a time. Um, what a wow. It, I mean, I'm telling you, I, that's where I got this scar on my face. I don't even know what happened, but it is a miracle by God's will that we survived. I would have been days shy of 22. Wow. And uh, anyway, so what happened? The good story. This is God's thing saying, I'm grabbing your attention. You're not <laughs> listening to me. So. Um, about a week later, you know, this was devastating, this big scar yeah. here when you're 22 and I'm in the shower, I'm rubbing my face, crying, not blubbering, but just kind of whimpering. My husband walks in, flings the shower curtain, grabs my face and says, shut up, you beep, you know, and he yeah, throws no. me back and he throws me back and I'm laying there on the bottom of the shower and the water's coming on me. And it was at that moment when I feel like God touched me and I said, oh no, this is not my life. Wow. This is not my life. And that was the beginning of me. You know, I left them. It was hard. It was, but I had my, my parents, my family, thank God. But I'm telling you, I always think about that. I could have been dead in the crash. Um, or if that wouldn't have happened, I would have probably drunk myself to death. So wow. God is so good. There was a purpose. And then I have my three boys who are just so amazing. My two older boys are serving the Lord. My older one is a music minister in Chicago. He just graduated college last nice. year. Um, my middle son's going to be a senior at Liberty. He wants to be a pastor. And my baby. Wow. Son, wow. And, my, and my baby son, he wants to um, make movies. So he loves the Lord. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. That. Judy, that's amazing. So through all that change that's happened or thing, you just say, I want to trajectory over to a different path, like for Yeah, for I mean, I mean, I here's the thing. Where I come from, there was not a day that I went into court that I didn't look up and say, Thank you, God. Because I still was like, pinch me. I'm a lawyer. Like uh -huh. I still can't believe it. You know what I mean? And so I am very proud of what I've accomplished, but it's not, I mean, it's me, but not really. It's only because God gifted it to me, Yeah. you know, and it's that kind of confidence. Talk about discrimination in the courtroom and sexism and all that crap. I dealt with it. Thanks, Naomi. I dealt with it firsthand. And so I have some insight and um, encouragement by God's hand for every woman. I do not want a woman to think she's not enough. 
Mm -hmm. God made you exactly how you need to be. And so what you need to do is to step into it. Say, Lord, let me see me as you see me. And when you step into that with fully embracing it, no hold back, that is when life is, you know, when you're in his will. That was like one of my, my next question is like many women struggle with not believing in themselves. <laughs> you wrote that your life work is to empower ambitious women of faith to recognize their awesomeness and their unique genius. Then to take strategic action to turn their passion into a profitable and scalable business quicker, easier than they ever thought possible. Do you have a strategy tip for these women how to deal with the overwhelm and stresses of everyday tasks and then also want something that they yeah. do? Yes, and there's so much to that. I could talk from now until you know 9.30 tomorrow morning. But you know, you can have the best strategy in the world. You can have the most you know, state-of-the-art technology. Um, you can have, you know, name it. But if your mind isn't right, you're not going to implement. You're not mm -hmm. going to show up, you know. Like how many women don't go live because they feel mm -hmm. like I hate myself on video. So what? I mean, I the older I get, I'm like, is that me? I look more and more like my mom, which <laughs> I love my mom. She's a beautiful woman, but like I don't want to look like her. I'm sorry, I don't. But um, so... <laughs> So really, it starts with mindset. Number one, believing like, you know what? You got to believe what the Bible tells you. It's as simple as that. If God says nothing's impossible with me, then believe it. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't make mistakes. You are perfectly imperfect. So be good with that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we all could say, I wish, you know, something, a body part was bigger or another body part was smaller <laughs> or whatever. But taller. <laughs> yeah, taller, shorter, you know, the, all that curly hair, you know, yeah. straight hair, yeah. but, but God doesn't make mistakes. And so he wanted you this way for a purpose. So be good with that. Not just okay with it. Be good with that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you have this ambition, here's another, th another pet peeve of mine. A lot of Christian women are like, I feel greedy. I feel greedy if I want to, um, you know, if I'm ambitious and I wanted to go into business. So I'm so good at this. I really shouldn't charge. I feel bad. What are you talking about? God equipped you with this special something that not everybody has. And if you're giving something in fair value, you should get something in fair value back. And yeah. so, you know, it's really mindset. That is huge. That is huge. And even myself, I see you never arrive. You always are going to the next level. And so you really have to always work on your mindset. And, you know, what am I thinking about myself? How do I perceive myself? What really is possible for me? Yeah. So all of that is ginormous in, yeah. in what I do. I never heard this mindset word until Pedro back in March. Some of the people on here have been to the people. I, I hear that verse, Romans 12, it says, be not conformed to will be renewed, but like, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have been comfortable in who I be, you know, I thought this was where I arrived. And then God can just continue to, I have a merge on my wall, like, orange, yellow, and green colors to make me cringe that I made at some ladies' art day, like calling their friends. And God said to write emerge. And, and it's like God speaking to me because I wrote in my journal yesterday, emerge and implement. Mm. And it's hard with what you're saying. It's a real birthing of like believing to implement. Mm. So like it's been, I've been four months really working on stuff. Like my whole life kind of four months really working on some stuff that is shifting me and it's hard to to continually believe like go to god and say you know and not go back into oh well it's just the way i am and nothing yeah. ever happened yeah yeah and see that's the power of community and that's where, except for my one-on-one -on -one clients, every other program or, or, or group coaching that I do, the community of sisters is 
is is what makes it work you mm-hmm. know and that's why i don't work with women who are not christian i have them approaching me and i'm like i'm sorry it just doesn't work because we go to god in prayer our mm-hmm. substance is in something real it's rooted in christ um and others are rooted in like crystals or you know throwing stuff up to the universe or something but see mm-hmm. the power <laughs> is i know it makes me crazy but the power is in jesus Mm -hmm. and um and community coming together to support each other because we are absolutely going to have those thoughts when we're like i can't do this who am i why do i think i can do this but you really can but it's not by your own strength it's by christ's anointing i mean i truly believe that you know i forget where it is i think it's zachariah um not by my strength, yeah. but by his mind. That might be my power, but by my spirit. Yes, it? yes, yeah. yeah. And also yeah. holding every thought captive. I never know where Bible verses are. I just read, they, they come to me. But yeah. holding every thought captive, you yeah. know, and I love the down of strongholds. <laughs> yes, yes. And see, I, like, I love Philippians 4 8. I, I often yeah. say this. Yes, I love that community. It's and one community of my favorite verses. Yes. So whatever is true or right or noble, whatever is pure, admirable or lovely, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. And I'm sorry, complaining about your wrinkles is not on the list. So (laughs) don't do it. Right. You know, I've gained so much weight through COVID and it makes me sick, but it's not on the list. So it's not on the think list. So I shouldn't think about it now. um, That's an interesting thing. Now, if I can just say this. Sometimes, sometimes clients say, Judy, you got to help me get motivated. You got to help me get motivated. And I say, yes and no. Mm -hmm. I'm here to encourage you to spur you on to do what you feel led to do. But I can't want your success more than you want your success. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, if you really want something, you'll sacrifice, you'll do the work, but you got to really want it. So yeah. I, I like my skinny self, but I guess I really don't want it because if I did, yeah. I wouldn't have the second helping of chicken, right? So. Yeah. I agree. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Very good point. So practically, now I hate to ask this question because God's been speaking to me, but he actually gave me literally to write down to journal. And I, because of a tragedy 21 years ago, I stopped journaling and i feel like from what i'm learning there's something really powerful about like back up um to write the vision down make it point is very important to me and i've done it in other ways but i feel like to transition to implement is there like you to get like to get these thoughts because how do we i know in a simplistic little how do we make that you know, this is just like a tip guys. Okay. Because there's a whole, but they're like one, one step to come from, okay. I got all this, like I've been online doing challenges. So other people here, um, what, how do I take this now and say, this is, I'm moving forward. Okay. So is it basically, I think the question is, I've got all this knowledge. I have all this stuff. Now I got to take action. And how do I do that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, you know what? Take step one. And, and really it's that, it's that simple. Are you familiar with, um, Oh, what is her name? Mel Robbins. Have you ever heard of Mel Robbins? She wrote a book. She, she's, she's like the number one speaker in the world. Um, and, and, and 10 years ago, you know, you should watch her story or, or so many years ago. Um, at the age of 40, she and her husband had a restaurant business. She's a lawyer also, but her husband had this restaurant business. It went belly up and they were in debt $800,000. I mean, yeah. she she said, I laid in bed and I was drinking and whatever. She tells her story very, very openly. Right. But she said, one time I'm laying in bed and I was watching NASA. A rocket was about to take off. And she said... They counted five, four, three, two, one, and up it went. And something came to her. She goes, that's the secret. That's the secret. Nobody wants to do anything. We're scared or we have all these excuses. But if you have a thought to do something, you've got to count back from five, she says. 
five, four, three, two, one. And in that time period, before you get to zero, start taking action. Wow. She, she says, if you don't do that, it's going to be harder with every second that passes to do it. Wow. It just becomes another thing on the list. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, and now I don't really think I don't do that consciously, but as an entrepreneur for the last 15 plus years, here's what I know. I got it. We got to get out of our own way. And we have to just do it. Like when I first started sending out emails, an email could take me over an hour to draft. And it might have been two or three paragraphs. And it's like, that's nonsense. Nobody cares if I have a typo or whatever. But I mean, the standard is excellence, but it's yeah. better done than perfect. Yeah. And so the best thing I can say is um, map out the steps you need to take to do whatever it is you're doing whether it's like a marketing thing or you were saying about a challenge, set out the steps you have to take and just, you know, one at a time, just start, just take action. It doesn't have to be perfect. Does that, that help? That, that's really good. Yes, you're so, you're welcome. Wisdom. Like you, you have been successful. You are successful in this and you're helping other people. Where can, where can women find you to, um, do coaching or find your information. Great. Uh, thank you for that. Okay. So first thing I want to invite every woman watching is my Facebook group. Can I mention that, Stacey? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's what it's about. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. My Facebook group, it's nearly, well, just over 3,000 women. And it's called Blessed to Thrive Community because we are blessed to thrive. It used to be called Driven and Equipped because I felt like God makes us like ambitious and driven, and then he equips us. But anyway, God told me to change it. So it's Blessed to Thrive Community. Other than that, I'm at, at Judy Weber Live, at Judy Weber Live on both Instagram and Facebook. And you can also find me over in LinkedIn. Um, but, oh, and my website, judy-weber.com. Those of you in business, head over to the freebies page. I got a bunch of amazing business building freebies for you. So That's I got branding true. and, and what I, I have, a, oh, I have an audio training um, about how three ways to make sure you succeed in business. And of course my podcast, she is extraordinary. Yes. That's, I want to check that out too. Julie. And also like, do you do workshops and things like that? Um, well, in my Facebook group, I do challenges and different events, um, yeah. you know, at least once every couple months. Okay. I, it's funny, this was going to be the year that I really took to the speaking stage and then COVID happened. Yeah. So, and I also was planning a live retreat down in Florida. I love, uh, Rosemary beach, Florida is in the panhandle. And right. so I rented a house and I was going to have a live event, an intimate thing for about 10 to 12 ladies had to cancel that. Um, so events, live events, I do want to put on once COVID ends, um, you know, uh, but I don't really have like workshops other than that right now, especially with COVID. You need to let me know about that event. Oh, <laughs> I think cool. to go. <laughs> I'm trying to get out more, Judy. Me leaving the house is like, this is sad, but out of, since September, the beginning of September, out of how many days that is, 300 some, I've been out of the house about 25 times. <gasps> Oh my goodness. I thought um, I was, you know, I, yeah, you got to get out of the house. Yeah. For me to go to Florida would be a big step. See? Yeah. Yeah. So but to be around someone so uplifting and inspirational and other women and bring some women. Yes. 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 Uh, it's funny. I love putting on events. My, yeah. my sister and I, my twin sister and I were in business for a time and we put on an event in April of 2019. And um, there were almost 500 ladies there in a hotel. It was, it was, it was off the charts. It was so good. Hear that, girls? I'll keep you posted. <laughs> <laughs> and you can look at Bless to Thrive. So, Judy, thank you for all that. That's awesome. How do you – this is one of the questions that I was praying, so between you and God, okay? So how do you keep your peace in the middle of all your business, and what helps keep you in that place? Mm. Wow, that's so good. Um, you know, just being grounded in the Lord and keep going back to Him. Um, my kids make me better. You know, kids are sanctifying work, as I'm sure you know. 
And my guys, I want to be them one day. They, they chase after the Lord, especially my middle one. Um, you know, totally. He, they chase after him. They're like, you know, teach me, teach me. And, you know, so, so they inspire me. I have several clients who are life coaches and one is a minister and she always has a good word from the Lord for me. And again, there's the community. Um, Mm -hmm. but really just going to him and saying, Lord, help me to see Mm -hmm. the next step and help me to rest. I don't rest enough. I'll be the first to admit I need to work from rest. That was a good word that came from, came to me, um, from, through a friend. I need to learn to work from rest and rest more. I'm in a challenge that talks about rest every day. We're saying how restoration comes from rest. Yeah. Oh, that's that was, good. Yeah. And, uh, another question is what brings you hope? You have a story where God turned it around and Um, the car accident that I, me and my mom survived, that was ginormous. And there's so much more detail I won't bore you with, but if anybody's curious, um, oh, I do have a YouTube channel. It's called blessed to thrive TV and my testimonies there. If anybody wants to hear a little bit more detail there. Um, but what gives me hope? I mean, it's Jesus Christ, especially with all the crazy going on in the world. Um, my, like I said, my oldest son is in Chicago. My other two are going to be going to Liberty in Virginia and the election's coming and I have a feeling there's going to be all kind of crazy leading up to that. So I fear that. And the minute I fear, I say, no, they're saved. So no matter what happens, they're good. And I have to always remind myself of that. I resonate with you on that, Mama. I have two in LA right now. I had three and one came back to Canada. So I have two in Canada and two in LA. And my younger one is going to now to England for nine months. Wow. Yeah. So like learning to learning to have hope and peace in the middle of chaos and COVID and you know, you know, hits on your business and with people afraid to spend or you know, and some people have flourished in this time. Oh yeah. I had yeah. my best month. When was that? In April or May? I forget that I had my best month ever. And, yeah. um, and, and, you know, July's not bad either. So, um, okay, God. yeah, I mean, God is so good. And, you know, um, when we talked about music earlier, I'm going to bring that around because praise music. I love to sing. I yeah. listen to the words. I think of the words as I'm singing. I don't, I don't just sing by rote. And I also love to pray while I'm listening to music. Cause I just feel like, you know, they say you can't think about two things at once. I swear I can, I swear I can listen to the music and, and pray, but anywho. So to me, um, you know, singing the good praise music and talking to God gets me in a place where I'm like, okay, no matter what I'm good because, you know, as you said, God's on the throne. Yeah. You know, it's funny that God gave me that question. It was all about three minutes to come up with these questions. And um, I had some other questions, but that one, do you think? I really feel like there's something there that you took music. Um, so I just play a releasing of the sound that God has given you mm-hmm. in worship. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I, I just really feel that strongly because it was so... It was just so exact. God just boom, boom, boom. And that was one of the things. And uh, I, I didn't want to put you on the spot saying if you didn't want to sing, but I feel like uh, there's, there's something. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? If you want to hear me sing, you should follow me on Instagram because often I, what I do is I kind of point my camera, uh, my phone, to the radio and you can often hear me in the background but so there you go if you want to hear me sing follow me <laughs> at Judy Li- Weber live on Instagram okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go look that up because God really spoke to me that it's 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 significant for you wow okay yeah. that's that's very interesting yeah. so like everything you're sharing too about being limited like God's gonna open up more like you yeah. know you, think, you know you're you're succeeding and doing all things God adds like an extra little you know, the icing and the thing mm-hmm. is something more for you. And I, I love that because that's mm-hmm. a journey 
I'm finding like every piece comes together in the people around us, in our lives, the things we listen to. It's like, oh, they're all coming in together and resonating yeah. in our hearts, you know? Mm, yeah. It's really, yes. it's really beautiful how you share your heart. I, I have fun with you, <laughs> like just hanging out and, and chatting. It's been really well, fun. This is this has been super fun, and I'm sorry if I if I cut you off. It's kind of hard to. No. I'm, as you know, the other person talk. I I usually do. Oh no no no! But you know, I'm on my phone because my computer wasn't working, so I feel like there might be a delay or something. But this has been so much fun, and I feel just so thankful that God brought us together. And again, it's funny because we have no idea how we came together, but. <laughs> We somehow connected, guys. We're, we're, we're both obviously connectors. And yes. that's a really neat thing that, and we both have a heart for women. So, Judy, um, I know you have to go early, and I will pray for the other people on here after. But would you like to give some something from your heart before you go and pray over the ladies here? That would be really sure. Nice. Oh, you want me to pray? That'd be awesome. Yeah, like whatever God gives you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are here. It's so funny. I'm looking at this little machine called a cell phone. And I'm connected to women from all over the world, Lord. You are so good. You are so good. Lord, um, I just, I just want to... Thank you, God, for, for bringing Stacy into my life and this opportunity to share my life experience and, you know, some, I hope, nuggets of wisdom, Lord. And I just, I just pray that it, it's received in a way that you wanted it to be received and that it was pleasing to your ears, Lord. And, and for every woman that's watching, I just ask for blessing, blessing on her and her life, blessing on her business. If she has a business blessing on her children and her family, Lord, mm -hmm. safety, Lord, we know that you, where you call us, us imperfect ladies, you will equip us to do your will and your purpose, Lord, if we allow it to be Lord, help us to see ourselves as you see us so that we can fully step in to our potential, fully step in to the plan, the beautiful and perfect plan that you have for each of us, Lord. And may we not compare, may we not compare because, you know, it's just so funny, Lord, we look at somebody and it's so easy to say, oh, they had it better or they don't know what it's like, but help us God to, you know, look at people again, the way you look at them you know, how I just want to love them. I just want to help them. And I just want to serve them. And why? To advance your kingdom. So Lord, help us to be able to do that. Guide us because sometimes the enemy likes to talk. And sometimes, even though we don't like to admit it, sometimes it's hard to hear your voice through all the noise. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I just pray for special blessings on everyone that's watching, whether it's now or in live or on the replay. And special blessing for Stacy for putting this amazing opportunity of community together. Lord, we love you. And it's in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. That we pray. Amen. 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 So it would be fun if you guys go check out Blessed, Blessing to Thrive. Blessings or Blessing to Thrive, right? Ble blessed to Thrive. Blessed to Thrive. Yeah, sorry. And um, check out her name, Judy Weber, but I think you'll be blessed with just the energy she carries and the wisdom and the experience. And I just enjoyed, I'm looking forward to having more conversations with you. <laughs> Me too. And hopefully one day in the not too distant future, meeting in person and giving no. you a big hug that without a mask. Yes. <laughs> I know I had to wear a mask last night. I was like, what? Because I never go over here. Like, what, what do I do with this? It feels, I, know, I, feel I don't like, I don't like it. It makes me cry. I can't wait till it's over. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, God bless you, Judy. And yeah. thank you guys for being on tonight. If you want to stay on, I'll pray for I'll pray over you guys. Um, I'll be on here. So feel free to stay on and we can interact and pray. Mm, okay. Love you. Thank Bye, you Stacey. Bye, everyone. So guys. 
That was wonderful. What an inspiration. Um, do you, any of you have any prayer requests that you would like me to pray? Write in the comments so I can see you. I'm going to go in the Facebook. Uh, most of the people who are my uh, comrades are on here. See you, Mandy. Saw you pop in. Are you still here? On two is here. Um, Lois, welcome. Oh, yes, Lois. You wrote a, you wrote a, a comment. I see it now. And who's all on here still? Christine, Naomi. Shantu, Mandy, are you still on here? I can't see who's on. Yeah, we all like prayer. You know, guys, uh, I wanted to read this. Somebody had sent me a prayer, and um, I read, Shantu heard a little bit of it earlier today, but I felt to read it over you. They were, it, it was specifically, from God to me, but I feel like I just want to read a piece of it over you guys, okay? Um, it's a Papa, Papa there, a letter from Papa. So you take it personally for yourself. My beloved, I am so pleased you're so even more of me. You've been soaking it all up like a sponge. I can see your questions. I have heard your prayers. You want to know how to now pour it all out. I have got the answers for you, my beloved, the direction you're longing for. Come and sit here with me and receive direction. Be still and focus on me alone. Yes, you've been learning it all for a purpose. I love your hunger and I will reward your hunger. I will help you process it all in your heart. Yes. This is the time to step out and show up and pour out. You've been filled to the overflow. Now is the time to pour it all out and see me multiply. I have chosen you. I have called you. I have equipped you to sow, to serve, to love, even more than you ever have. Isn't that beautiful, guys? That That's just a piece of it. It's like three pages long, but I just felt to read that over you, to bless you, to bless you in all that you're going through. I have had highs and lows and downs and God speaks to me so deeply in this last while and shift things for me. And I feel like I'm finally coming back into the strength that God has put on my life. And it feels really great to be able to step into it, right? And so when I do these these interviews and lives, I feel like God is, even if it's one of you, you know, I just want you to be met in that place where there's deep healing because that's what I'm going through every day too. So you guys, I just want to bless you, encourage you. And Lois, you're looking for a new place to live and wisdom for your business. Father, thank you for Lois. Thank you that you have the perfect place, God. Thank you that you know exactly where she needs to be, the neighbor she needs to have, the cost, everything, the provision, everything, God. I pray for a flow. I pray for just perfect order in Jesus' name. And Father God, I just pray for wisdom that she would know this is what to do and this is what to put aside. God, that she would know what is the next step. And she would do that step. And then what is the next step? Just like um, Judy shared tonight, do the first step. And then the second step. Then the third step. So, Father God, I, I just pray for peace in that. That as she works on her business, as she works on her business, you will bring the wisdom. As she steps out. It's like, you know, whether you go to the left or right, You'll hear a voice behind you saying, Lois, this is the way, walking. So I just speak that over you in the name of Jesus. Well, thank you, Lois. Amen. Amen. Thank you that you're here with us. Thank you, Father, that you're here with us. I just lift up my single friends. I thank you, Father God, that 
they are not alone. And I thank you, God, that you have specific relationships for them. You know what they need. You know who they need. You know who they need. But God, thank you that you're preparing their hearts. Thank you that you are building into the women that they are so that they can step in and have 100-100 relationship, 100% and 100% in Jesus' name. I celebrate my single friends. I lift you up, women, that you are beloved and you are daughters of the King. And God has that man for you. He does. So I speak it out, a blessing and a belief in Jesus' name, that as she was sharing earlier, what we've been learning about mindset, that you would believe, yes, that is for me. And that you'd be encouraged it. And even from um, Judy's story, how she met her husband, like God can lead. And she fell up the stairs at their dates. So come on, guys. Shantu, I didn't. I'm going back up here. Um, Shantu, what a beautiful, uh, sensitive spirit you have to, to desire to know Jesus. And I just pray for you that as he is spending time with you, it's like I see you, you're just there. He's just right there with you. He's, he's walking alongside with you. He's sitting with you. He's eating with you. He's drinking with you. He's watching television, just like you see, just like you already experienced and you've asked him and he tells you, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. He's making it even more tangible. So I just pray a blessing over that in Jesus name. Joanna, I see you pop on here and you wrote that letter from Papa over me and I was blessing these ladies with the beginning of it to share the wealth. So Joanna is an amazing author, writer, and just hears from Papa. I'm up in time with Papa and she blessed me with that. So Shantu, I just pray for more, just more overflow in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lois. Yeah. Okay, we won't do that for you then. <laughs> She's like, I'm not wanting a relationship with the guy. So we won't pray that for you. You can just tell you, you can tell God that, right? Um, yes, Christine. Uh she's saying to you, Joanna, that she's blessed by my letter too. Yes. So good. So good. Hi Stephanie, I see you pop on there. <laughs> Lois, you're funny. <laughs> Some people don't want to be prayed for. It's like, no, <laughs> I'm happy the way it is. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really awesome. Hi, Ethel. Well, guys, uh, is, did I miss um, something someone wrote to pray? Stephanie, I pray for you and all that you're bringing together and organizing and orchestrating with everything going on. And I just pray to you and to bless others through you. So I just pray for just everything to get done in a flow in Jesus' name. And as you're going into your new job, <laughs> I'm praying for you, Steph. <laughs> That's my sister. And Ethel, I lift you up in prayer. And I pray for rest for you. And I pray for breakthrough for you in Jesus' name. I'm looking over at here because I see your name is there. But I pray for I pray for a breakthrough for you, Ethel. It's like a birthing through. It's it's a birthing through, Ethel, and a coming through of something that you you've been seeking God on. So I pray that for you in Jesus' name. And Shantu, I pray I, I lift up your marriage and just pray for an intimacy emotionally that God will bring uh, things that are similar um, together so that they're not it, it's not so separate that you'll have interest yeah interest together that's what I'm hearing like Shantu I just speak into your spirit that you're not alone and that God has you there and I thank you that God, that her husband is coming alongside and she's coming alongside him 
and there's a newness. There's a, a freshness that they haven't known in their journey together because it's been so many years. So Father God, shake it up in a good way. Uh, make it fresh. And thank you, God, that she's going to have a testimony. And thank you for her radiance and that she'll be even more radiant in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Sling it. <laughs> oh, that, I'm just picturing Stephanie. <laughs> You've never seen such a tiny woman with so much muscles and carry heft, like heavy <laughs> weight things. And I'm just picturing it as they're praying. Just <laughs> that one's going over there. Throw that one into the truck <laughs> as you're picking up all the garbage and throwing it away. I was just seeing that. Thank you, Lois. I pray that too, for peace of God and joy. Oh, yes, I do pray for that because so many days um, we can get bogged down, you know, and I was sharing in our group earlier today about how I was learning about the word yield through a lovely lady named Olivia who's doing a challenge and she brought the word yield and I was looking at the word yield like it was like, stop, you know, put everything down, sacrifice, you know, pause, look at, you know, at a light, look both ways, be aware of danger, all those things, right? And I was looking at it as like a heavy a yield. And she brought up that you yield when you plant seed. It's harvest and it's fruit and it's um, reward. Reward, guys. So sometimes when we hear yield, you know, I surrender all. It's like we're going to reap a harvest. We're going to reap a reward. And she was sharing how not only from our seed that's planted, but from seeds that others have planted, and then we receive the reward from God. So I pray that over each of you right now too. Whatever God is asking, and myself as well, us to yield, to let go of, to give up, that we'll recognize it as reaping and harvest and reward. Get excited. Get excited when God asks you to surrender, to yield. Get excited, guys. I was, I'm done by this yesterday. I, I've talked to about five different people about this and it just filled me up going, wow. And I'm seeing how God is rewarded in the yielding. And I thought that, that felt alone, you know, like you're saying Shantu, right? Like, it's like you feel alone, but you're actually, you know, it's like someone said to me 21 years ago when our brother passed away. She was sharing about a seed when it goes into the ground. It's down under the, they're dark, alone, feels like nothing's happening, right? And yet it's not seeing what's above ground. It's sun and water, you know, weeding. And one day it pops the roots and it grows up into the, above the ground. And a lot of times, a seed can feel alone and you can feel like it, there's nothing happening but a seed planted seed planted in good soil grows beautiful things and Shantu saying yes like a recipe yields eight. Oh yeah i never thought about that see how many times do we take a word and think of it in the negative connotation and not in the positive conversation you know i forgot the word <laughs> connotation what what it means so father thank you for allowing us to yield to give it to you to open our hands and say have your way lord have your way whatever you have whatever you have have your way because if I choose, I'll want to be comfortable. 
if I choose, I want it to be happy. If I choose, I want it to be perfect. But God, sometimes you bring us through the deep things to refine us, to make us whole, to give us that message that the world needs to hear of life and truth in Jesus' name. So, Father God, thank you for these beautiful women. Thank you for what you've called them to. Thank you for the businesses that they're starting or going to start, the jobs, the ministry, whatever that looks like, Father. Thank you that you are covering them and that you are meeting them in that place, in that alone time. Thank you that you're doing that with me. And thank you, God, that out of us, rivers will flow. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, him and I are having conversations about that. <laughs> God's comfort zone is quite different than ours. Yeah, him and I, we're having the conversation, a few conversations, a few, like, but, but, but. And he's like, no, no, no. Look at it, it says 1 to 11, 11 just now on the thing. Wow. <laughs> That's hilarious. God's comfort zone is like vast. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> That's funny. Naomi, yes, so true. And Naomi, for you with your creativity and releasing the artwork that God's put on you, I just pray for just knowing how to complete it. What, what it's going to be and what to make for what page and what, what designs and what words are just flow in Jesus' name. And guys, I just want to lift up tonight. Um, I have one friend who is, um, she's in the hospital and she can't walk and she can't even go to the washroom. Today was the ninth day that she'd been in. And she was able to have a shower because it took yesterday, it took an hour for another Stacy <laughs> to get her into the shower. Um, she said she'll never forget. It was monumental for her. And we're just praying for her, for God to release her and to walk. They don't know. So if you could lift her up, her name is Jackie. And her husband was diagnosed with leukemia two years ago. And so we're praying for him as well. <clears throat> and there is a GoFundMe. Um, I didn't plan to share this tonight, but it just came to my heart. So she's needing prayer. And there's another person that I won't mention their names, but hers was more public. Um, but a man that is a friend of ours, his wife has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And he's not believing that story, and neither is she. And she's already been through one bout of cancer a few years ago and it was beautiful how God healed her but she's feeling a little you know heavy in spirit and so as he you know to go through this is is tiring so I'm not going to share their names but I just I shared um, Jackie's video in the heart to heart Facebook group Naomi you listened to her story and she has such like I prayed with her yesterday and she has such hope and joy and she's just a sweetheart. Um, but this other lady and her husband, I want to lift them up to just God, bring your healing. God, bring just showing them what are the next steps. If they're supposed to do chemo, not do chemo. God, what are they supposed to do? Just that they would have peace. And God, we speak life over her in the name of Jesus. And I just lift up family members of anyone on here that have family members that are struggling with sickness. And whether they know what it is or don't know it's been diagnosed or not, we just, we don't listen to the doctor's diagnosis as the end all be all, but be all. We end it with Jesus, what he says. So God, we thank you for the lives that we're lifting up before you of people that we love, yes, and Uncle Terry. God, we pray for purifying of his blood. 
to thank you, God, that you are purifying his blood with your blood. We pray for, a, <laughs> I'm seeing a intravenous, Jesus intravenous. <laughs> like, is that what it is? Like the, where you put the needle in? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I just, uh, I'm seeing it attached um, from Jesus to, to Uncle Terry. I just saw that. So praise God. Thank you for life. Jesus, we just pray that any of these people who need to know you, that are in our families, God, that you will meet them in that place, that you will reveal yourself to them, that you love them. We thank you for our nephew who graduated from rehab last night, and we were able to go and be there and bless him. And God, I just pray that he can stand strong. God, that he will know you. We just lift up all of our family members. I just feel like it's so important to do this, guys, that don't know you. Father God, we thank you that they are going to come to know you. And God, I thank you for what you're doing in our siblings, too. And Father, I thank you for the healing you're bringing to love. And thank you for Stephanie. Bless her, God, and what she's walking in and that you've called her to. And just give her wisdom how to even go deeper. God, this strategy, it is simple things. You know, buying smokes is a gift. <laughs> buying smokes is a gift. I, I never thought I'd say that publicly. <laughs> but sometimes we go to people and we're trying to fix them and save them. And we're not even honoring them. And that's something that I'm learning too. And Stephanie, that's something that you walk in with, um, just understanding those kind of things. And I bless you in that. So Father, we lift up those that we've judged in our families for their habits, for their lifestyle, for addictions, for all of that. Father God, we just release them. We release those judgments in Jesus' name. Yes, Stephanie, it seems to work. <laughs> Find those smokes. <laughs> so, God, do your work and like use the donkey. So you can use us. You can use smokes. You can use, I mean, God, we we release fear of trying to walk in control or fear of it not being the way we think it should be or being like church you know no fixing just listening yes Naomi that's good wow that's good Lois I spent the last two days with Carol Lovejoy yeah I, I met that lady at Battle for Canada and the thing she taught me the most is honor is healing Ooh. so even in buying the smokes or Taking them to a place that you're not really like, I don't want you to go here, but you know, um, it's like we, we forget to honor, we feel like our way is right and we forget to honor the people for who they are, where they're at, just where they're at. So that's beautiful, Lois. I love that. <laughs> Christine. <laughs> Appreciate it. My dad bought me smokes. Thanks for bringing that point home. <laughs> Stephanie's like, oh, the fear not. <laughs> guys. And wow, hallelujah. <laughs> so Carol Lovejoy, Stephanie's like, yes, because what does what does honor what does it look like? That's something that I'm really asking God to show me with each individual and even the situations I'm in right now, like being silent isn't the best way to honor either. But if I don't know how to speak it or do it, I'm waiting on God to show me. So I lift that up to for discernment of when it's time to speak into a situation, but to always bring honor. I love that Lois, what you um, learn from Carol Lovejoy. God bless that woman. I know, Stephanie, you know who Carol Lovejoy is. I just heard about her from Battle for Canada, and I see she's a powerhouse. But 
Lois, you must be really blessed <laughs> to uh, spend two days with such a powerhouse woman of God. Lois is saying, yes, listen, value, and love. That couldn't be more. So, so Father, I pray that we have the opportunity to listen, value, and love those that are deep in our heart, that need you, that need healing, that need to be, feel like they're significant when they matter. Jesus, help us to do that. Lois is saying, yes, Carol of Joy is a treasure. Look her up, guys. Wow, yes, you were blessed. Oh, Stephanie, I thought you knew of her from the events because we talked about it before. She's, isn't Carol Lovejoy a um, uh, musician lady too or a dancer? Lois, is she a dancer um, from the indigenous people? Naomi, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> Process. <laughs> I love you. Yes, what an honor to be trusted. Hmm. Yeah. With people's hearts. Yeah, she's an intercessor. I, I, she prayed up in Edmonton, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So look, look her up because the whole room was impacted. Like, we have 3,000 people in that place. Uh, on that weekend or 2000, so the whole place was impacted by her praying. It's probably online somewhere. Yes, the First Nations elder, yes, but I thought she did a, a dance or they were playing the drums when she was up there or something. It's very, very powerful. I remember it. She's not on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. So, God, thank you for women. Women like Carol Lovejoy, who intercede, who speak truth and life and love, and who still teach and pass on to the next generations. Yes, the drums. Yeah, I remember it was powerful this one day. I think I even have a recording of, it was in the afternoon and it was just, drums are going and I believe she was up on the stage and ooh, everybody was brought into throne room it was so incredible so you guys have to look her up I'm sure someone has videos of her or something <laughs> I'm gonna now I'm curious guys I'm sure Christine's already looking it up I'm gonna go look her up and see because uh, I, I think I need to hear it and I'm gonna look on my phone for that dance thing yeah i i think she was in north Valford. wow god will wake her up wow and tell her to go to somewhere to pray wow that's like those um film fingerprint of god and father of lights right where that one guy would be like he gets up in the morning and god tells him just to go over here and then he went to a witch doctor's and that guy disappeared wow yeah, we want to look her up. Wow. Thank you, Lois, for sharing that. Yeah, you are looking, Christine. <laughs> She's been all over the world. Yeah. I was for sure Stephanie had told me about her. Um, pretty incredible. I did call it Steph. <laughs> Ravi Kendall. Shantu is saying. You lived in Arkansas, Mississippi, Mississippi, right? Yeah. Wow. I'm not, I haven't heard of him as well. Oh, so spelling's K-N-D-A-L instead of Kendall. Thank you, Sean, too. Guys, I love you. Powerhouse women with sense of humor. Arkansas. See, Sean, too, I got confused today. You grew up in Mississippi and now you're in Arkansas. Yes. Okay. It's hard to remember all these little details, you know, that are so important. but. They're like, so many people you meet at one time, you're like, uh-uh. Oh, so she doesn't go online or source comes online from the Lord in the Bible. I love that. But, you know, 
I think people have videotaped her at some at some things that uh, I've seen. <laughs> Naomi Zoom Zoom Zoom. <laughs> uh, prayer Zooms. <laughs> Anyone Zoom Zoom prayer Zooms. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to close here. Oh, yeah, Battle for Canada. Yes. I And I think I have something recorded. So I'm going to go look it up. I, I probably didn't put her name down, but I do remember that day. And I want to go find it. I'll send it to you, Stephanie. Yeah. Yes. God, bring her to Sault Ste. Marie. To pray over the land that I was born in, where my sisters live, and where there needs to be breakthrough. We have the Ojibwe tribe there. And yes, thanks in advance. If God, you can speak to her. Thank you, Jesus. No, God's going to find her, Lord. <laughs> God's going to find her and lead her there. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> That's funny. Because like, you can't find her. Yes, we will We will look. We will, we will search high and low. Stephanie calls herself stalkers or us. <laughs> <laughs> thanks lois you're awesome too i'm glad that i've met you guys it's been fun uh bringing new people on and finding just gifts on people and making new friends and building community i've, I've really loved this yes batchawana yes you call it out steph pray it i believe that uh god will lead her there's a call on Sault Ste. Marie. It's a border town. <laughs> I was born there. You're born there. What do you expect? There's a call on that city. Come on. Let's call it out in Jesus' name. Our roots, right? Oh, Canada, our roots. Yeah. So I'm going to close in prayer. And I will come on. I'll, I have a Zoom prayer and share time um, that I'll do for the next hour. Yes, Naomi, you talk me into it. <laughs> so I'll close here and then we'll be on the Zoom. I'm on it, Steph. Yes, you will be. And you will tell me the, Stephanie will be telling us the testimony. <laughs> and the funny thing is she'll be like, I know she's in town right now. <laughs> right, Steph? <laughs> God will be like, wake up, Stephanie. Carol Lovejoy is in the Sioux. <laughs> and drive there. You'll find her. I love how it works. These things happen. See that, Lois? All the Great Lakes point directly to Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> yeah, when you're on the airplane, uh, when you look at the maps, and you're flying over the Sioux, it's like so amazing to see the lakes all going there. So all roads go to Sault Ste. Ste. Marie, or is it all lakes? <laughs> you know that saying? All roads, whatever it is, there's a saying that says, yep, I know. We believe that, Lois. We believe it, truly. God tells her. And it's been amazing, some of the stories, like Stephanie was on here on Tuesday night sharing some stories how people that we knew in Calgary and then their daughter lived in the Sioux area. And, you know, our family has seen a lot of that where you're like, how? Like, Stephanie, you were at a, uh, meeting out in Strathmore and you met our friend's mom like at some function, right? <laughs> so God, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for connections. We thank you for new and inspiration, stepping out and implementing for steps. Yes. Like, Christine, you did your challenge. I celebrate you. Two weeks, girl. Now it's time to do the step for the next one, and I'm doing my steps for my first one. So we're implementing. Whatever it means for you to implement right now, I just speak life over you. Yes, Shantu, you did your challenge too. And so, Father, I thank you for any fear that is coming, that you break it off in the name of Jesus. I just speak boldness and courage and roaring like a lion. Like I shared a few weeks ago, to roar. It, the roar of a lion goes five miles, the sound. Ooh, five miles. But a lion doesn't really have a voice unless it roars. Hmm? Think about that. 
and the roar is to reach out and say to the enemy and warn them, hey, look out, we're here. We're coming. So Father God, thank you for these women that roar with you. Thank you for these women that rise up in your power and your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. Thank you that every interview night I have unique people, different people, and some of the same people. Those people are unique too. <laughs> thank you, Father God, for uniqueness. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Stephanie, as we're talking about this, something happened. She's going to share. <laughs> Waiting for the next comment. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you for family. Thank you for showing us what you want us to do in a day. God, I thank you for leading people to reach out and ask for prayer. And then we have the honor to pray for them. Are you kidding me, Stephanie? <laughs> See? That's incredible. Like Lois knows her too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for what you have planned. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our leaders of Canada. Thank you for our women leaders of Canada. Thank you for the leaders who haven't stepped into their role yet, that you're giving them the courage and the strength to step in and to say, this is what I'm called to, God use me. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. Dad and dad come, come on, Stephanie. <laughs> Hi, Zachary. Zachary's looking in the window. Okay, guys. Love you. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going on Zoom call now. I'll put the Zoom thing, um, the number um, on the Facebook right now so that you can uh, um, come in and join if you like. We just hang out and see where God leads. A bit. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> you guys, I think we could have a stand up comedian night. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, I'm going to post um, Zoom, share, and share right now. Zoom.is. And then, what is it? Don't want to put it on the live video, so I'm putting it here. Okay. I think this is it. Okay. Let's see if that works for you guys. All right. We're closing off. Lots of love. Go laugh. Have fun this week. Have fun. Thanks, Lois. Thanks for sharing it with us. And have an amazing day. I pray God just bless you abundantly and gives you some revelation that you've been asking for. Get that house and wisdom in your business. In Jesus' name. Okay, guys.